This video is on defining data types in Haskell. Okay, so when defining your own data types, you use the data keyword. Then you have to give your data type a name. It has to start with a capital letter. And after that, you supply constructors. Now, there are different constructors for your, uh, for your type. And those constructors can have arguments. It's important that you do not write any literals here. You actually write down what the types of the arguments of your constructor are. So let's look at some examples to make this a bit more clearer. For example, if you want to have a data type that represents some primary colors, you could do it like this, where you say, well, it could be either red or orange or yellow or green or whatever. Uh, of course, we could have done this a bit differently, where we actually have RGB values or something like that, but we don't need it for this example. You could also have some... Um, definition of natural numbers that start with a zero or are a recursive definition of a successor of a previous number. This uh, can be used sometimes in order to do proofs, for example. Or you could have this data type that constitutes a calculation. Now here, nothing interesting is happening. This is just an example showing you how those types work. It's also interesting that this uh, pnum type is recursive because the successor gets as their argument another pnum. So those recursive data types are actually really important and we will talk about them in a second. So now the question might be, how do we work with our own data type? Well, it could work like this. You can use your constructors in a pattern matching, just like you did with lists. Because think about it, a list had two constructors, the uh, prepend uh, or colon constructor or whatever you want to call it, and the empty list. And you use those in the uh, pattern matching. Now, here we have other constructors like add, sub, mul, and diff, and now we can use them like that here. Okay, so let's look at recursive data types. Here we have a new one, the tree of A, and this is a special kind of data type because it now has a polymorphic type in it. So this is not just any tree, um, at least not in the tree that we see down here. This is a tree int or an int tree or whatever you want to call it. It is defined as either a leaf or a node that has some value in its middle and then a left and right subtree. It's very important to have this A here since, of course, we don't want our tree to have different types on different levels. That would be uh, weird and it wouldn't work because there would be no type safety. But here we see how some of those uh, types can be constructed. We also see that this dollar sign can be used in a constructor. You can basically treat a constructor just like a function. And here we see an example of a tree. Okay, so how do you work with those data types within your uh, functions? Well, it's actually rather easy. So here we want to have an, in, uh, an incur function, so an incrementation function. And on this sort of uh, number definition, this is very easy. You just put a successor in front of what number you have. And here we see something very interesting. Uh, we use this successor constructor with partial function application. Because this, of course, takes one argument. It takes a pnum as an argument. And we do partial function application in order to get this incur function, which is nothing but putting just the uh, successor constructor in front of whatever number you have. Now, this decrement function here shows how uh, you of course, can use uh, this sort of recursive pattern uh, where you say, well, okay, if we have the constructor, uh, the successor constructor, then this n will be uh, of the type I want. Right, and here we see some more examples where we define an add and a sum function. Um, again, this is just to highlight that you don't have to be scared of uh, those recursive data types or any data types. They work just as anything else in Haskell. Uh, 